you for the rest of your life. And so God brought Moses to that place, to that, to that turning point in his life. You see, folks, the choices that we make ultimately make us. Right? The choices that we make ultimately make us. And this 25th verse tells us about the life-changing decision that Moses made. Let's look at that verse again, if you would. Verse 25, Hebrews 11. Notice what it says. Speaking of Moses, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. Now think about that for just a minute. The Bible says he chose to suffer. Isn't that what it says? He chose to suffer. Now, if you and I have a choice between suffering or not suffering, what do you think we're going to choose? I ain't going to suffer. Amen? Amen. Why do you go to the doctor? You want to suffer. Man, a few weeks ago, I somehow got my finger, uh, the tip of my middle finger, so I ain't going to show it to you, um, and, and it got infected. And it, it just swole up. It was huge. And it was nasty. And I thought, well, I, what? So I went to the doctor. He said, oh, that's bad. I said, I know. It feels bad. And uh, he said, well, let me, let me give you something for that. I said, that's what I came to you. He said, we got to get that infection out of you. I said, let's do it. And so he prescribed some medicine for me. And I began taking it. He said, I remember, take it until it's all gone. And, uh, and, and I'd miss a time, but I, you know, and I, I ended up taking it until it was all gone. And a few weeks later, finger was feeling a whole lot better, looking a whole lot better. But you know what? I, that sucked. That wasn't no fun. Mm -hmm. Now, that was just my finger. Right. But man, that thing was messing up my whole body. Because it was hurting so bad. I didn't want to suffer. So I said, Doc, you got to help me out. You just got to help me out. Who in their right mind would choose to suffer? Let me give you two names. Moses and Jesus. All right? Moses and Jesus. I find it interesting that Jesus would refer to Moses as he was talking about his own crucifixion. Jesus would refer to Moses. Turn to John chapter 3. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Take your Bible. Turn to John 3. Keep your, keep your finger or your hand or something there in Hebrew so we can come back to that. But I want you to just look quickly here in John's Gospel chapter 3. You with me this morning? Amen. 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 You're awfully quiet out there today. All right, come on now. It should be warm enough in you. Is it warm enough for you? Yeah. Amen. All right. All right. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. Look with me, if you would. Beginning at verse 14. John 3, verse 14. Jesus speaking here says, And... As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have 
have what? Yes. Eternal life. Everlasting life. You see, folks, Jesus chose to go to the cross. And by him choosing to go to the cross, he was choosing to suffer. He chose to suffer. He who knew no sin but would become sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. And, 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 and Jesus said, let me set the record straight for everybody. No man takes my life. Exactly what he did. But he chose to suffer. For you and for me. He was saying, I'm going to the cross, but I'm still in charge. Ain't that good stuff? He's going to the cross, but he's still in charge. And he's going to have the last word. He's going to have the last word. And he had the last word when he arose from the dead and said, Now, take that, devil! Well, that's not in the Bible, but that was just my own version there. You know, he rose from the dead. Victorious as our Savior and our Lord. Now, let's go back to Hebrews 11. I just want you to see that there in John 3. There's a whole lot there in John 3 you can talk about, but don't really have time to talk about that right now. But Jesus mentions how Moses lifted up that serpent in the wilderness. And if you remember that story, I think it's in the book of Numbers, where the people of God had sinned. And because of their sin, God judged them. Sent these snakes into their camp. Yes. And these snakes begin to bite the people. Yeah. And many of the Israelites died. And God told Moses to get some brass and form that brass into the shape of a serpent. And God said, put it on a pole and put it in the middle of the camp. And whoever has been bitten, all they got to do is look at that stake on that pole and they would live now that's a might think that's a strange remedy for a poisonous bite but it is the remedy that God established and when God establishes a remedy you better go ahead and take it and so the people lay there dying because of the poisonous bite of those snakes Looked up, yes, saw the snake that Moses put on that pole. And that's what Jesus was talking about when he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man himself, Jesus, must be lifted up on a pole called a cross. That's what he was talking about. Because in the Old Testament, the serpent was a symbol of sin. Alright? All right. And brass was a symbol of judgment. So, God told Moses, make a serpent of brass. Because I'm judging their sin. Jesus made that connection about his own judgment that came upon him because of your sin and because of my sin. Moses lifted up that stage. Jesus was lifted up to pay the price for our sin. Back to Hebrews 11. 